Hi guys, it's Andy the GD Script Dude with another video about state machines. In this one I'm going to cover a, a way to do it by looking at states using the process delta function. We've got a Q output and a minus Q, so what I want to do is create a train of pulses like on off, on off, high low, high low with time coming out of Q and then the inverse value coming out of minus Q. And that was often used to drive uh, digital circuits. It's called a clock. So changes, uh, change of state in the circuit take place as the clock traverses from low to high and high to low. So you can see here we've got like a start button, a fire button, and a reset button, and a slider. So these the functions of these are to start it going continuously and then the text of this button will change to stop so we can click it again to stop the output from the outputs there or if it's a one shot we can just click fire and then it will output a, a sequence of pulses and then stop and the number of pulses will be defined by the setting of this slider so it'll be like one pulse two four eight sixteen and so forth like that actually more pulses but more exponential and that, that is the purpose of the fire one and then we have a led which is just a white dot now but it gets modulated according to the output level so if it's low this will be blue and if it's high it'll be red so it like blink on and off and when we click start we, to get the continuous output we can uh, change the frequency of the output like from very slow one cycle per second to rapidly outputting pulses and then there is also a button for reset this will output a pulse on reset which could be used to reset the whole circuit or while it's running there we can even just click reset and then it will put this into the low state and then stop it as well or if we've got a long sequence of pulses it even click back quickly and then it will stop it and reset the system anyway so how about seeing what it looks like in practice if we play this digital logic simulation game we can just go here a new circuit and then this is uh, what I'm calling a one of the peripheral parts and it appears in our list there so we can select it and we can drop it down and if we start it will go at the slowest speed for continuously and then we can stop if we start we can click reset you see how these the text changes as well or we can fire one off fire it just goes one at once so you can see there's quite a lot of uh, button uh, interaction and this also changes so let's just do that so as we move the slider, the the rate changes as well. So let's stop there. Notice uh, it turns green and I can move it around. And then if I click around here, it doesn't. Or I hover around here, it doesn't because it needs mouse input or needs to respond to, respond to user input in these areas. But when it is outside these areas we can respond to the mouse movement and that is the purpose of these areas here so if we where do we want to go oh, I'm in the distraction free mode there so here you can see the the makeup of the the scene it's it's called a clock and it's on a 2d the root is the a 2d node and then we have this area 2D and then we have two collision shapes so these would if used to determine when we're just hovering our mouse over it so we can drag and drop the, the shape in the scene and that has to be outside of these areas which need to respond to the mouse clicks so that, and then we have our overall symbol which is uh, just comes from a texture with a region area of it which is showing us our this clock drawing very simple now but maybe 
in the future I'll make it look much nicer but it's just very basic uh, graphics for now and uh, what have we got the, this is actually a kind of template for my my uh, project where each part has a similar format with a symbol and an area with collision shapes and a set of inputs and a set of output pins in this case the clock has only got outputs it's got three of them so we've got three pins the pins are instances of a pin scene which i've defined elsewhere so there's three of those you can see these green dots here and we have our v slider and then we have the led which is just a sprite and then now our three buttons and also we have a timer to control the timing it's set as a one-shot timer now let's look at the code for this clock and we're going to be using a state machine and we have uh, enumerated three states for it stopped where the clock has stopped and pulsing where it's pulsing the output just so many a count number of pulses and then oscillating just on off on off on off so one way yeah so we connect signals from our buttons if you look there and if we click on the signal i connect all of the the on button down signals for each of the buttons to the the main script so if we scroll down a little bit we can see the these three like uh, signal handler functions so on start button down but as a beginner you may be tempted to like you connect these signals and it, it puts aut Godot, Godot or automatically puts these functions there and then you, you're tempted to put a bunch of code under this to handle handle the events well I, I'm not doing that here what I do I set a value called start to true it's like a flag to say we have clicked on the start button and these are defined as uh, variables up here we just got start fire and reset and they're initially set to false so if any of the buttons are clicked they get set to true okay then also for the timer i've connected its timeout event see on timer timeout it's connected to here and again I've got a variable that just a flag if you like called time has stopped and I set that to true and that makes it quite nice to use in our in our state machine here which I put under the process delta function this function is called called automatically on each frame of the game and all it consists of is a, a match statement collapse that down you can see it's only got match in there and it matches the state the clock state va value which we set to one of the three enumerations there when the game starts it's it goes clock state equals stopped as you might expect so every frame it checks on this has it changed the state and so initially it will be stopped so when it matches to stopped it says it goes through these if statements to check if any of the buttons have been pressed so if the reset button has been pressed we that value is set to true and what we initially what we first do is set it to false to say like we've handled it no need to on the next frame to handle this again and all this has to do is call a function which I'm calling reset output so reset output is uh, there it is and it just uh, makes the outputs go to the reset state so the the Q output should be zero and if it is actually high then we want to flip the output so the, that will become low and the not Q output the minus Q output will be high so th the reason I do this is because um, in my the, the overall game the, this is going to emit signals that something some changes happen but if the output was already in the reset state there's no need to do anything else 
So we only flip the outputs if we need to. And that, uh, and even though I've said that, I'm emitting the signals, so maybe I didn't need to do that. I could have like indented this. Uh, it wouldn't have done it unless it had to change something. Anyway, that's what that first condition does. We're in the stop state. We checked if the reset button was pressed, and if it was, we're going to reset our outputs. Then the next one, it says if the start button was pressed. So again, we set start equals false. So the start flag was true. So we say we're going to handle it to make it false. So we're going to ch change the text of that button, which said start on it, to stop, because that from now on it will have the function of stop. And then we call our, our function called start oscillating. Rather than putting all the, the code for start oscillating in here, we're going to we're going to put it elsewhere so it's more declarative in our code. You know, we don't we don't have too much confusion and jumble there. So we, we call this function, and then again, that's easy to a chunk of functionalities can be called from other places as we have. You can see up there. So this just starts it, it running, and we have a delay value for the the timer, and we divide it by a rate. And uh, we set the timer wait time, and then the timer is made to start, and then we have this flag for the timer, and we set that to false because the timer has not stopped yet because we just started it. Anyway, so that is what that does, it, how it starts the oscillations going, and then I'm in the wrong place. Yeah, I'm in stop, sorry. And uh, yeah, we had the start situation. We set the text to stop of the start button, and then we started oscillating, and we disabled the fire button, and then we changed the state to oscillating. Okay, now we're oscillating. And because we're oscillating and we started the timer, the timer at some stage after the delay, which we set there, we set the timer wait time delay, it times out. And with this callback function for the timeout, it says timer stopped equals true. So next time that and in another frame, the process delta checks this clock state, which we set to oscillating we did that there so it goes down here it finds the oscillating state and we say is the reset button pressed i.e. is the reset flag true or start button true no they won't be because we set them to false up here see there false and false there not the reset sorry false there so, if it's oscillating and the timer happened to be stopped, this was set by the timeout of the timer, then we want to make that flag false, and then we flip the outputs, because that's what we want to do every time we, we go through a cycle, right, of this clock, and then we, because the timer has stopped, we need to start it oscillating again. So we go through this again, start it and going again, and we recalculate this delay and set the wait time because we may have changed the slider. So we could have a look down here. I've connected the signal from the vertical slider to this function, this callback here. And what it does, it calls a function called set rate. So we calculate our new rate based on a power of two. So 2 to the power of the value of the slider, which goes from 1 to 6. I guess this is all quite kind of confusing. <laughs> the main point of this uh, this kind of this video is just to show you another way to implement state machines and with a few enumerations and the process delta function checking the, the current state and acting upon those states. In this case, there's three of them. And then say we want to stop oscillating, we will click on our start button, which is now called stop. So 
imagine it is oscillating and we have clicked on the start button I mean this uh, if statement will be action because if the start flag is set set it back to false and then set the start button's text back to start and then the fire button disabled is still disabled yeah I think that's right and then uh, clock state we set that to stopped that should probably be true there actually anyway clock state equals stopped and then return don't do anything else the next time around the loop we come to stopped and yeah we're back to stopped again and say the yeah say we click the fire button we set that value to the fire button callback when it's pressed down sets the fire state to true and uh, we want to disable the start button and disable this fire button and start pulsing we call that and when we are pulsing we're going to set our clock state to pulsing the actual function for starting pulsing is just to set a count which is equal to the rate value of one to one to whatever it would be then we start oscillating we just uh, we do the same as oscillating except this time we have a count value and then when the state machine evaluates the clock state as being in the pulsing state we have a look if we want to reset then that kind of stops it stop it sets clock state to stopped and it re-enables the, the buttons oh I got a bit confused up there didn't I so I said when fire button disabled equals false that actually makes it enabled yeah it's a little bit confusing that logic anyway we're pulsing and if we reset then we're gonna stop pulsing if not we wait until the timer stopped and then we set that flag to false so we don't keep going around this loop and then we flip our outputs and then we decrement our count value for how many pulses we wanted and if that has reached zero then we should stop this pulsing activity so we make the start button enabled again and we make the fire button enabled then we set the state to stopped otherwise we we oscillate again sending another pulse out so I hope that wasn't too confusing and it's quite a neat way of doing another another version of state machines using process delta some states overall states and then flags for which buttons have been pressed or when the timer has expired so I hope you like that and it wasn't too confusing and um, please like and subscribe if you liked it okay cheers see you in another video